Well, glory be and mercy me, we've done it yet again. Here we are, daily walk around the graveyard. Today we are talking about the rise of neo-McCarthyism, the rise of leftist censorship, the rise of anti-imperial censorship generally that is sweeping through the society as we are speaking. Um, little events here, there, and everywhere, as well as very large events. <clears throat> the banning of RT Television and RT America specifically. RT America has now shut down. Uh, for those who don't know, Russian television, RT Television, had an American branch. Uh, and all of the performers and all of the people involved in it, people like Lee Camp, Abby Martin, Chris Hedges, Richard Wolff, have all said repeatedly that they have experienced no notes from Russia, no, uh, there is no large overmind coming from Russia to, in order to tell them what to say or what to think or any of this kind of stuff. Even now, as Russian uh, Television America has been shut down, they are saying the same thing. So this idea that RT Television is just, just Toting, toting Putin's line uh, couldn't be further from the truth that what has happened by the shutting down of RT America is that the American empire has seen its opportunity to silence dissenters, to silence the anti-imperialists that exist within its own country. Uh, and it has done so en masse and in one fell swoop. There's a long history of doing this kind of thing here in America. Uh, during the Iraq War, for example, anyone on network television who stood up and had an opinion uh, that dissented against the war, someone like Phil Donahue, for example, was simply fired, simply removed from the airways. And the anti-imperial message is what seized the day, and we saw where that has led us now. Most notably in this current purge is YouTube has removed Russell Bentley. If you don't know who Russell Bentley is, Russell Bentley is a Texan who in 2014, 2015 went over to the Donbass region where the Ukrainians were shelling uh, the Donbass people and in order to fight against Nazis. He has been reporting in the Donbass region ever since, and YouTube just removed his channel and all of his videos and all of his content. This is because the Empire is afraid. It knows that the public opinion and the public tide can and will turn against it, and it is attempting to staunch this flow of information as an act of utter desperation. This is why we look back when Alex Jones was systematically removed from all platforms. This is why we said, as leftists, that that was wrong. This is why when Justin Trudeau evoked the Emergency Measures Act against the right-wing Freedom Convoy, that we as leftists said that this was wrong. And it is because we know that these measures if they are used against figures like the Freedom Convoy and figures like Alex Jones, eventually they will be used against us. That this is something of a truism throughout history. This is uh, an obvious thing that is occurring. And as the death cult becomes more desperate to maintain its power and to maintain its control, it will continue to silence dissenters. This, of course, this story takes a very personal tact for me. How long until my voice is removed from these platforms? How long until I am removed as a, an overt and obvious communist? How long until I am being asked by uh, officials or by co their corporate overlords and their corporate owners? Um, are you a member of the Communist Party? How long until the Communists, like is happening in Ukraine, 
how long until the communists are banned and are rounded up here in Canada and the United States. We aren't too far out from it now. Uh, the populace is gullibly going along with the state line, the populace allowing itself to experience these injuries. And as I say repeatedly on this channel, it's very, very dangerous. It's dangerous to simply silence dissenting opinions. It is dangerous to silence those who you do not necessarily agree with. It is dangerous to simply omit from the public consciousness the array of discussion and the array of what can be discussed. We see that very explicitly in this Ukrainian crisis, where the capitalist death cult has successfully omitted from the conversation the existence of Ukraine's Nazi war of aggression against the Donbass people. That that omission from the conversation has allowed everyone to believe that they are standing with a uh, defensive Ukraine instead of uh, standing with the aggressors in a war that bit off more than they could chew. That the Ukrainians are not defending against the Russians. The, defen <laughs> the Ukrainians are paying the consequences of launching a war of aggression against Russians. But if you oh, simply omit from the conversation the existence of the Donbass war, you can believe anything you like. And this is why what is happening with the banning of RT television, with the purging of figures like Russell Bentley, this is why this form of censorship is extraordinarily dangerous because it is leading the country down a path of utter self-destruction. The empire, which is based completely on the principle of chaos, right? The free market will decide, let chaos reign. These statements are semantically equivalent to one another. Well, in its pursuit of chaos, to allow chaos to reign, the United States and her allies have painted themselves into a corner. A corner that the leftists, who have now been purged from the, uh, from the media apparatus, now have been saying all along that the way the United States has been operating by sanctioning everyone, well, if you sanction everyone, you're the one that's isolated. And now this has painted the United States and her allies into a corner where they can no longer get access to the materials and the gas that Russia was providing because of this war of aggression committed by NATO and Ukraine against the Donbass people, which how dare the Russians fight back? How dare they, right? That's the statement. Even among leftists, that's the statement. How dare they fight back against a war of aggression by Nazis against their own people? Right? How dare they? And now the United States is turning around and looking at societies it has placed sanctions on, societies like Venezuela, for example, which has been undergoing a sanction regime for over a decade, and the United States is starting to say, well, maybe we can lift those sanctions and begin trading with Venezuela again. But here's the harsh reality about what's going on in the world now is that places like Venezuela are no longer interested in trading with the United States. Why? Because China exists, because Russia exists, because the Belt and Road Initiative exists, that the allies of America and America herself is about a billion people, a billion point five people. 
Well, that means that the rest of the world is something like 8 billion people. And those 8 billion people are starting to realize that they would simply be better off without America. And so as America turns around and purges the voices that are pleading for reason, they are actively shooting themselves in the foot. They are actively cutting off their nose to spite their face. You have figures like George Takai standing up and saying, yes, we're going to experience hardship. Prices are going to go up. Things are going to become more difficult, but it's worth it to spite Putin. Uh, meanwhile, Putin is casually just turning around to China, inviting China, India, Saudi Arabia, a series of other nations to Russia in order to form an anti-fascist coalition, uh, which is essentially a trade agreement with one another. If India and China agree to such a trade initiative, incidentally, that is a death knell for the American Empire and NATO. The uh, the Indians and the Chinese historically have been at odds with one another. America has played them against one another uh, for obvious reasons. In India is skeptical of China's power in the region. Uh, however, if China and India can make nice with one another, because they both have a common enemy in a uh, NATO-backed uh, <laughs> America that is... Uh, uh, happy to fund neo-Nazis in order to attack people, and then when you fight back, they go, oh, how dare you, you're so, uh, you're so evil. Well, who wants to go along with that? Who wants to go along with that? The purging of leftists from the conversation has become dangerous, and we are going to pay for it significantly. Not only through higher prices, not only through a rising rate of poverty, not only through a rising rate of homelessness, but we will eventually turn on one another. We will eventually go to war with one another and begin purging our ranks, not just from the media, but from our reality itself, because that's how this goes. If you stop listening to the people who are fighting for peace, then all you have left are the people screaming for war. Welcome to North America. It's the end of this video, guys. Like, share, subscribe. I have a Patreon down below, as I've been saying throughout this whole video. If you're not actually supporting leftist voices, you are uh, just helping the Empire continue the destruction of our own society. Which at this stage, I don't want to say seems inevitable, but boy howdy, it would be nice if we could avoid it. Don't you think? It would be nice if we could actually avoid the destruction of our own civilization. It'd be super great. <sighs> Always remember, guys, you are a quantum being walking around in quantum energy. The billionaire class is spending hundreds of billions of dollars in the vain hope that you won't realize it and just stay the good little commodity that you're supposed to be. Rebel. Revolt. Repent. Good luck. We're going to need it.